Hi everyone and welcome to Faux Rockto. My name's John Dutton. My name's Bobby Gaucher. Hi Bobby. Hi. What are we talking about today, Bobby? Today's not going to be an easy one. Isn't it? Why? Well, it's going to be cringe. Ooh. You know what, everybody? Just before we start talking about cringe, I just want to give a shout out to Ben Gaucher, Bobby's little brother, who wrote and recorded and produced our Boropter intro music. So good job, Ben. That's awesome. Thank you. He's very cool, and he would think that is very cringe. It's cringe what I just did. Oh, Perfect. absolutely. He would hate it. Perfect. So go on then. Let's talk about cringe a bit. So cringe is something that I'm not very familiar with. I don't think you are as well. It is a new word that's come into like teenage slang, I guess. So to me, cringe is kind of the way I read it in books. Something is cringy. So cringe isn't an adjective. It's a verb. Yeah, it's like you an actual cr- action. You cringe. Yeah. Right? You, you, I'm doing it. You can, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you can all see. I'm doing a cringe. Yeah, I'm doing the cringe. <laughs> People a, will love A minor it. hit for... Anyway, uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> Frankie says relax. Frankie does the cringe. It was after Frankie goes to Hollywood's <laughs> fourth single, Do the Cringe. That was all very cringy, what we just did. I if, love it. When my kids listen to this, which they won't, yeah. uh, they will be cringing right now. So I'll add another layer of my life into this podcast. I do comedy sometimes. And I find cringe a delightful thing. I love when something is so uncomfortable that it makes my body literally shake. Like, for instance, The Office and Michael Scott. Right. So that is the archetypal, and I don't know, because we don't do any research for this podcast, whether it was the first use of it, but cringe comedy, that's the archetypal cringe comedy. I I would probably say Seinfeld is. Kramer makes me, like, I find Seinfeld unwatchable because of Kramer. Okay, well, fair enough. And and, I mean, we're not here to do historical, like, uh, analysis of how the word evolved or anything. And in terms of, you know, TV history and stuff could be the office or whatever. But I know for sure I've heard it referred to as cringe comedy and Mm -hmm. especially the original English version of the office. Oh, so good. The UK version or whatever it's called. I've been with people who had never seen it before who are not English and have cringed. They've been shrinking into the couch. There are certain episodes of that show that have taken me like three or four times to watch because you have to stand up and walk away. But I find that to be very well written comedy. It's perfect. Whereas now I hear from your kids and from other people younger than me that something is so cringe that they can't handle it. And it's like, but that's the point. You're supposed to handle it. Yeah, so this is how, it's not just that the word has evolved, because the word has actually barely evolved. It's become used as an adjective, but if you say cringe comedy, it's also an adjective, right? Mm. But it's more as a label, right? It is cringe, okay? That's what you're saying, right? And that's what I I hear all the time. Yeah, something can be cringe. Yes. So it's become this kind of extra encompassing label for something, right? Mm -hmm. And, but it's beyond just the word. You're right. It's it's a, to go back to a previous episode, a vibe almost, right? Where... (laughs) Where No, but it, it seems that way, right? Well, it's not even a vibe. It's cringe-worthy. Right. But cringe-worthy, I, you know, that has been around from before my kids' time and everything. But the thing you're talking about, it's true. It's a new thing in, the, in youth culture where it is cringe. And, like you said, they just can't handle it. Yeah. But it's so unfortunate because cringe is such a great thing. You're supposed to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. In a lot of situations, and especially when it comes to comedic situations, you're supposed to be embarrassed, almost. Mm -hmm. That's what makes things fun. Because you're you're touching a nerve or something, right? Yeah. If you weren't cringy or uncomfortable or vulnerable, things wouldn't be fun. You're not really expressing that much. Yeah. And it's almost like you're just doing some wordplay or some, some, I mean, very basic dad joke or something like that. Mind you, dad jokes are cringe. Yeah, but I would say even like... It was dad jokes, and then dad jokes got to a certain point that they became cringe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love a good dad joke. Mm-hmm. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine. It just come naturally to me somehow. <laughs> but it's true that the thing that you picked up on is that kids identify this as a thing that happens all the time mm-hmm. to them. That is like, it's almost like the bane of their existence, Yeah, right? like when I was a kid, things were embarrassing. Like it was so embarrassing, I could die 
but that no longer happens. Like, I feel like kids don't even have the opportunity to get embarrassed. So all they can do is feel cringe for someone else. Like dad jokes, for instance, yeah, funny, roll your eyes, but like, they're not that cringy. It's just a very straightforward, terrible joke. Right. And the point of the cringe is that the trouble that you have dealing with it is because you are extremely empathetic and you feel so awful for the person Mm -hmm. who is doing the cringe thing. But when I was a kid, I would get pantsed. Oh, okay. That doesn't happen to kids anymore. No, no. So they can only feel embarrassment for other people, not themselves. Ah, okay, okay. You never live in fear of getting pantsed anymore. I don't. (laughs) You wear a belt, so you're (laughs) fine. That's why. I learned a long time ago, wear a belt. But this is this is kind of the, the crux of it, right? Is that it's this oversensitive embarrassment for somebody else's embarrassment, mm-hmm. right? That whole convoluted well, like, <laughs> exponential embarrassment is the cringe. Have we moved so far away that like we don't have that much embarrassment anymore that we have to feel it for other people in other senses? I guess so. I guess so, because everybody is supposed to be so okay with who they are, right? Mm-hmm. When you're a young person... That you don't, you're feeling embarrassed would be a, be weird. It would be almost like you're, you're betraying being young, right? I guess so. But like another good example from like the mid 90s is kids used to just pee their pants all the time. And I remember this distinctly. And it where, was. Wait a minute. Where did you grow up again? <laughs> I grew up in a place where kids peed their pants. But like it was even in pop culture. Like there's an Adam Sandler movie where he exclaims, peeing your pants is the coolest because it would happen so much that like, eh, oh well. And, like, just embarrassing things happened all the time to kids that, he, like, you just shrugged and moved on. All right. But nowadays, when was the last time your kids peed their pants? Was it publicly? Probably not. No. So now it's only old drunk people peeing their pants. And mm-hmm. they are never embarrassed, but they are cringe. That You're right. They are cringe for the young people. Mm-hmm. Whereas I, if I saw, that's, you know what? I think we've hit the nail on the head here. <laughs> if I saw an adult who had peed their pants... I would not feel embarrassed for them. I might feel like, oh, that's kind of crappy or whatever. whatever I, I could say something. But my kids would feel cringe. Oh, yeah. I would giggle. Yeah, exactly. Be but like, your kids ah, would feel depending. genuinely bad about it and like feel bad for them. Yeah, but the kids, they like want to crawl into themselves and, and just disappear when, when, it's, when the cringe occurs, right? <laughs> when the cringe has cringed. When the... When the cringe steals Christmas. Oh, no. The dad joke. Perfection. Okay, time to say goodbye. Bye, everybody. All right. Thank you for listening to Faux Raptor. We'll see you soon. No, we won't. We'll hear. No. You'll You'll... hear from us soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye.